Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Mr. Regan, for appearing in front of our committee today. I've got a couple really important issues that I want to visit with you about, um, very important to our Iowa farmers and our producers, and so thankful to have had the conversation we did uh, the other week, so thank you so much. Um, one of the most important issues that the EPA EPA will consider for my state is how to handle the renewable fuel standard. And we all have very differing opinions, maybe, on this committee. Um, but it is very important to Iowans. And uh, should you be confirmed for this position, waiting on your desk with anticipation, uh, when you get through the door, will be a number of pending items related to the RFS. Um, there will be some decisions on small refinery exemptions. Uh, you will have an RVO for 2021. There's pending cellulosic biofuel petitions and a request by governors to waive the RFS program because of COVID-19. And then a few months later, EPA will begin figuring out the 2022 RVO and how to handle volumes in 2023 and beyond, uh, as well as determining how to handle some regulatory hurdles facing fuels like E15. There's a lot going on in this space. So in short, um, because there is a lot happening, EPA really does need to step in and provide guidance. So how will you ensure that these important matters, which really do have an outsized impact on many states like Iowa, and for a number of these states in the middle of the country, how, um, how will you look at this and make sure that they get handled in a way that provides further economic opportunity? Well, thank you, Senator, for that question. And I, too, have enjoyed the conversations we've had on this topic. RFS is definitely a priority for this administration. I recognize that there will be a number of things sitting on the desk if I'm fortunate enough to be confirmed. The reality is, is that I want to sit down with my staff, sit down with legal counsel. There are a number of things that are caught up in litigation. There are a number of things that we need more transparency around how we arrive to those decisions. And we need to be sure that the agency actually applied the latest data, the latest science, and followed the letter of the law uh, in some of the decisions that have been made. So we plan to do a thorough review of all of the decisions that fit under the umbrella of the RFS, but we don't plan to do that without consultation with you and with other stakeholders that will be impacted by these decisions. Mm -hmm. What I can promise you is we will take a no surprise approach. We will be extremely transparent. We will be forthcoming with the science and the data and the legal determinations that we come to in order to make those decisions. And we'll share those decisions with you. Mm -hmm. And I think that is an important, a very important first step. And, and hopefully we continue to work beyond that. Transparency is something that we have felt has been lacking. And we fully expect that to uh, have integrity in any sort of program, we need that from the EPA. We need to understand how those decisions are being made. Um, so if, if confirmed, staying on the topic of the RFS, can you commit to a strong and growing role for corn ethanol in the RFS, including for 2023 and beyond when the statutory tables have expired. Again, we have some hurdles coming up after 2022. EPA will be heavily, heavily involved in this. Um, we do want to see uh, the continuation of our renewables. Is that something you can commit to? Yes, I can commit to the fact that uh, the president has indicated that agriculture will have a seat at the table in this administration, especially as it relates to climate change. We're going to take a look at all of the latest science and be sure that we're communicating that with you all. And there is a commitment that, again, following the science and following the letter of the law, the intentions of the RFS will be a top priority for us. Wonderful. And I, my time is running short, so I'm going to jump ahead to WOTUS. And on the first day in office, President Biden gave clear direction to EPA to review and rescind a number of the Trump EPA's major rulemakings, including the Navigable Waters Protection Rule. And as you know, this rule replaced Ob the Obama administration's 2015 WOTUS rule. And it the Navigable Waters Rule does 
enjoy widespread support from our farmers and ranchers. Um, if confirmed, do you intend to rescind the navigable waters protection rule? Thank you for that question. And if I'm confirmed, I plan to take a look at what our options are to address any kind of lingering concerns, whether that be litigious or concerns with the community. Bring our stakeholders together, as I've done in North Carolina, and take a look at what do we need to do to move forward to provide some certainty to our farming community, especially our small farmers, so that decisions can be made and investments are not stranded on the sidelines. But I also want to be sure that we do that in a way where we are protecting our water quality, our wetlands, mm -hmm. and our bays. And I always believe, and maybe you do as well, but our, our farmers are the first conservationists and uh, do a, a very good job um, through education and other means uh, putting those things into practice. So I appreciate that. Um, we, what Ernst, we don't want to do, certainly, expiring, what we don't want to do is exacerbate the problem further. And thank you very much for your indulgence, Madam Chair. Thank you.